Welcome back, disc golf fans, to the 2023 Discraft Great Lakes Open presented by Grip6, a disc golf pro tour playoff event presented by Barbersol. Thank you guys for joining us for the final nine holes of our first playoff event of the year in 2023. I'm Nathan Queen, again joined by Andrew Fish. Not only is this a pretty historic disc golf pro tour event, it's also our tune-up going into Worlds next week. And look at these guys. They seem to be ready. Calvin Heimberg throws in an eagle. And Kevin Jones, Anthony Burrell, Austin Hannum not far behind. Let's take a look at our top 10 here. You see why these guys are in the top 10. A minimum of four down to keep you in contention on that front. Yeah, incredible scoring so far with the great weather we've had over the final two days, Saturday, Sunday. Hole 10, 650 feet, a par 4. A couple scattered trees on either side of this fairway, leading into a pretty narrow tunnel. Landing zone is more or less a spine, and then going steeply uphill with some low-hanging branches, and then a pretty tricky green up here, slopes away bright and short especially. Heimberg again powering an eagle. He'd like a little finish on this to put him in the ideal landing zone. I think that's going to leave kind of a hyzer into the green. Man, that is a huge tee shot. He gets well into the flat past that tree that you mark off of the, or for the landing zone on the right side. Well into position. We saw Hannum do this on hole two. Kind of tossing a roller up there. He needs to land in the short stuff with cut. But based on the dances, I think that's landed in the long stuff with a uh, flip on it. Yeah, it may have gotten up there a little bit. Some of those spotters by the tree that you want to get to, or, or spectators by the tree you want to get to on the right were scrambling. Kevin Jones taking that hyzer line and gets just to the left of that tree. A little pinched off there. Yeah, potentially a roller. Uh, with a very flippy disc to run up the hill. Barella went high and left side in round one. Today a little more conservative. This is the shot I think of when I see this hole. Kind of low and driven with a distance driver, but still in a fine spot. So Austin did find some short grass, but well right. Gonna try forehand roller looks like he put a good angle on it and he's able to get through the first set of trees down there might have given himself a circle two look yeah par is assured if he desires it uh wild scramble shot to go through that right side on a roller a b with the backhand and great counter skip i think that's the second time we've seen him be a little bit inside on that second shot attempt. Yeah, easy to be inside when you, on these uphill run-ups. That's kind of the the easy miss when you have to plant your, your plant foot higher than the rest of your body. Kevin Jones does go with the roller to get up the hill, and he's put himself just outside the bullseye. You can't do it a whole lot better. No, I don't think so. Heimberg with a Draco gonna test all of that ceiling. Going hole. You've got to be kidding me. What? This is unreal. You've got Twice to Twice in be. five holes. He's seven down through the last five holes, Nathan. That Calvin Heimberg is on an absolute terror of a stretch on this disc golf course <laughs> right now. And real quick, that's going to vault him into a tie for second place. Using every bit of ceiling that's there, Calvin Heimberg, his second Eagle 2 throw in of the round. And hole 10 magic at Ledgestone, hole 10 magic here at D-Glow. No way. Hannum from the fairway. Little half throw bid. <laughs> And it should have gone in. And for the second time this round, Calvin gets a triumphant walk from nearly 300 feet away. Yeah, second curtain call in a round. You don't get that. You don't get that. No. 
AB from the low side, about 26, 28 feet. Yeah. And this time converts on the uphill putt. Good adjustment from hole eight. Yeah, it's just a birdie though. Yeah, I'm kind of bored with birdies at this point. Once I, w once I've seen what's possible, why stop here? Another boring birdie. No, birdies are incredible on this hole. <laughs> I have yet to do that. Uh, yeah, great hole by everybody here. Austin with the par. Uh, that also feels pretty good on this hole. Yeah, excellent scramble from where his tee shot started. Into hole 11. Chance for an ace here rather than an eagle. Uh, 512 foot par 3. We are in the more difficult position up on the top of this hill. A uh, backhand fairway driver, like Calvin likes to throw, I do believe is the best play to park or get inside circle one. You do have a fairway, or you do have a forehand shot as well. Kind of got to stand it up. Calvin's got this one turned over too much. Yeah, pretty good angle, just the drift slightly too early in the flight. Kevin Jones going for the forehand. This has to push all the way to the back wall with a touch of flip. He did that. And then that kind of craters out maybe near circle two, mid C2. Yeah, that's the shot you can throw to kind of stay in the fairway and get to circle two. The forehand to get to the pin, very difficult. You always, not always, but likely end up in the stuff on the right if you do get pin high. Yeah, that's a pretty safe bailout zone. That's where AB is tracking currently. <laughs> and depending on the wind and how far he is, he might... Might take a little spin up at that. Hand I'm going to follow. Such good wrist action here. He's going to keep it higher and turned over. If it stays over top of those trees, I really like it. Uh, unfortunately, going to come up just short. Somewhere between round two and three pen and this one. Yeah, there is a play to go over that tree. I think Austin was maybe trying to do that. But just a lot of distance to be able to get up over top of that. And Calvin Heimberg, seven down through the last five, is going to take a par. Yeah, Calvin's toast. Uh, so Austin Hannum, that's the third of that same kind of nose-up, floaty left miss we've seen. We'll see how he can adjust to that. Barella from C2. And looks like he wasn't quite able to get his legs into it. Unable to do the step that he likes from circle two. Jones for his comebacker. Calvin Heimberg with a very good scramble. Uh, low stress after the tee shot kind of drops down early. Hannum converts on his par. And a pretty common theme here on hole 11 four pars 73 percent of the field gonna take par on this hole hole 12 a little more attackable 344 feet uphill branches on the left and right mean that you have to push a pretty specific line either overpower the disc and trust that you're going to come up to the left side of the circle or a little bit of flip if you'd like to stay a little more true to the basket Heimberg pushing through a perfect disc size window up into C1. Sometimes you just have it. I guess. I guess. Calvin Heimberg on one right now. Kevin Jones, I'm imagining a little more hyzer release and flip up. He loves those understable discs. And he tries to hit that same little disc sized hole, but catches a little bit of foliage on the way by. Still going to be in circle two, though. Anthony Barella has lots of speed. May just go for big hyzer quickly, but pulls this one out a little bit too wide. Yeah, I like testing that back wall. Uh, Barella with too much pop on that swing. Han, I'm going to show us the forehand flex play, which I believe you like to widen the fairway. 
Yeah, it shapes well for it, but it's a lot of power, just like it is with the backhand. You just kind of run out of steam once you start to fade back. I think he joined Kevin Jones in tagging some of the left tree. So disciplined layup up to the bullseye. AB from about 70, and that left and short functional as a layup. Yeah, Kevin Jones getting up to mid-circle two, effectively playing as close to 70-foot putt, and he is going to jam it dead center. We'll rewind that. And, yeah, right on the pole, touch a hyzer the whole way. Yeah, smooth as can be. No wobble in that flight. And Heimberg from about 25, 27 feet. Yeah. Clean and in. So although he has a par, he is still one stroke ahead on the last seven holes. That's wild to comprehend. You might see that at Idlewild where there's some, some true eagle opportunities. You don't see that at Deeglo. No, he has the second and third eagle that we have seen on the weekend <laughs> here in the same round. Six foot downhill par three probably reaching that 70 foot or so foot range downhill on this one as you have the original hill and then a secondary drop here once you reach the gap flattest or safest green that we're going to see on this course a pushing hyzer with a forehand just around this tree Come on. similar to this this is a little high if it does hit the gap likely to fade out early but gonna fall down left side Kevin Jones also reaching for the forehand more hyzer lower and this like, flips up I like this line a lot grabs a good skip around the rocks pushes him near circle two's edge I think and that's definitely a, a jump putt opportunity for Kev Jones Be also powerful sidearm. Similar line, but a bit more inside here. And it is going to get past that original tree in the fairway, but be over on the right side. And we're going to see four for four forehands. As Hannum kind of yanked left. In the woods, probably a lean out forehand. Yeah, go into a knee to lean out a bit farther. And that's a well-executed, very touchy, very touchy flex shot there. Absolutely. Good combination of letting the disc fight out at the initial angle at a very slow speed so that it just can't run past the basket. Heimberg from the woods. And able to successfully lay up. Yeah, it doesn't look like he had much of a chance for a bit at the basket there. AB going to try to give this one a chance and does well, doesn't leave it short. And that's something you can finally do here on hole 13. And Kevin puts it on line but comes up short. And tell you what, look at this gallery that's building for the chase card. Everyone excited to see this action going down as Calvin Heimberg trying to make a push. Yeah, great showing. Big names on lead card and still a good showing out here on chase card. 
with the gallery. Great to see. And if you can't see it live and in person, I guess Gatekeeper Media is about the second best option you can do. So thank you for joining us, of course. Uh, just nine birdies here on hole 13. Again, going to see a lot of pars, a lot of four players getting par as 82% of the field. 60 players out of 73, guarding a three. Hole 14, 800 feet, a par four, wide open. But there is OB left and right. Push a big drive out to the bottom of this hill and then throw very steeply up to a green that's pretty clear. It does have some OB to the right side at about circle one and a half. You were talking about hole two being kind of that distance meter, that extra slope in the hill. I think this hole has kind of become a distance meter type of hole as Calvin Heimberg really testing that left side but looks to stay in bounds. It's 500 feet to the bottom of this hill and then it just keeps on going up. Yeah, it sure does. That uh, that 800 undersells how far this hole is going to play by a long shot. Yeah, so those players that, that are on tour that have the consistent 420 feet, they can't reach this hole. Yeah, they can't. It's hard. <laughs> you got to have some bonus power or be able to put a flex on it. Barella tracking towards the left side. And he's going to be out of bounds. Heimberg had stayed just in over there. I think the crosswind uh, may be doing something unexpected in the fairway, even though it seems still back here in some protected woods. Hannum follows Kevin Jones out to that right side. Oh, no, and he's not going to fight back. He's going to be out of bounds well early. This is going to be a tough bogey scramble here. Yeah, his best potential now puts him probably midway up the hill from where he won't be able to see the bucket. Okay. He executes that pretty well. He was a, he got a bit farther than I was expecting him to be able to there. Still won't be able to see the basket, but should have an opportunity to get up and down for bogey. AB's third is pumped way right up over the crowd. And this is going to find the OB long at the top of the hill. Yeah, double OB, absolutely not what a, a power player like Anthony Barella anticipating. Jones with the hyzer would like that to flatten, but it's not quite going to. Little kiss off a fence and into C1. Yeah, fortunate jump there. That would have kept him back a good ways in a, in a weird spot if it hadn't jumped off the top. And Heimberg, distance driver, up the hill. Oh, and doesn't catch stability in time. He's just a foot or two out of bounds, and he's going to have to walk back to mid-C2. Man. You know, somebody pointed that OB long out to me today because I didn't know about it. I have, I have no, no reason, reason to know about yeah, it. I have no reason to know that that's there, but we have two players here on Chase Card going to find that long OB today. And for Calvin Heimberg, that's a tremendous momentum shift. This is a, it's not an easy hole, but it's a very simple hole to take a three or a four on. Now putting for par and potentially his chances at this tournament. Oh, and going to come up left side. Clean round coming to an end. Calvin Heimberg in for the five. Drops him back to fifth now. Yeah, you see how packed in the contenders are. And Kevin kind of the giveaway as well. We're talking about talking about Calvin, but Kevin was also making a good push. Some putting woes have haunted him here. Yeah, roughest hole so far on the day for our chase card as three players going to card bogey strokes there. Hole 15, 960 foot par four. Very difficult tee shot. Need to get 500 feet or so off of the tee to have a viable opportunity to attack this basket for a birdie. 
big hyzer shot. You can go a little understable to catch some drift and then late fade. Or just power an overstable disc around the corner. Jones, once again, putting a steep hyzer and filtering perhaps through the fringe of the corner to a great spot. I imagine he's going to be looking straight at the basket from there. And Heimberg, pretty high. And I think it's inside, Nathan. It is going to catch some high branches and fall down pretty early. Doesn't look like he's going to be in a good position to have an easy scramble. Four is a good score on this hole, but definitely not when you're trying to chase down a handful of other very good players. And that's what you're looking for from Austin Hannum. He gets up there almost to the flat, reaching close to that 500 foot range. A long straight shot into the pin from there. And I hope not burning up on re-entry is this spike hyzer from Anthony Barella. He tags one tree in the landing zone. I think that's still over 500 feet from the bucket. As we see a bush move, Calvin has thrown. We'll tell you about it in a minute because I, I didn't see a whole lot. Here's Barella. Playing for a quick turnover, but filtering through some vines and off to the left side of the fairway. Not a whole lot of headway for Calvin on his second. This now third from well back. Yeah, probably close to that 500 foot range and he has turned it over too much. He is again gonna be, could be in a precarious position, but he may have punched through there far enough to have a hole to the pin. Yeah, the right side can filter occasionally, but it's still pretty dense. Hannum slinging a forehand, also tracking over to that right side just shows you how far this hole is. Austin Hannum threw a great drive and ended up he he looked he threw what looked to be a good forehand and faded out early. Kevin Jones with a bit of a slip there it looked like. Yeah. That's that's another tough break for Kevin. I'm hoping they can find that one. That's well off the fairway and it is very thick, very briary. I think the trick to finding your discs is not throwing them too far off. You want to go where other people have already made the mistake. AB with the putter up into circle one. Oh. oh. He went far enough that he has found the walkway to the, in between the next holes, and he's <laughs> able to pitch up nicely. Yeah, jump putts up into circle one. We'll have a four opportunity. And I believe that's Austin Hannum. On his third, this is Calvin for par. Oh, man, he's got himself a putt in here. And just low, Calvin Heimberg going to have to settle for back-to-back -back bogeys here on 14 and 15. No way. And collectively, our card finding the teeth of D-Glow here. Yeah, 14-15, not being friendly. As Anthony Barella going to go double bogey bogey. Austin Hannum able to collect the lone par here on hole 15. And Jones. Oh, excuse me. Jones is able to scramble for that par. Yeah, it was his second that had flown all the way over there. Tell you what, tough hole.
level 16, 396 feet, a par 3, plays a little bit downhill, although an upslope before the island green means you pretty much have to fly onto there. Anything that doesn't make it can go to a drop zone, or if you cross somewhere in the safe zone, you can advance to that point. Jones going to play the right gap with a backhand flip up, flying very nicely. And needs this to slow down now, and no, it doesn't. He executed that very well. Great speed control, going to be inside circle one. Austin Hannum also going to go mid. Holds it flat, and following Kevin, maybe a touch lower, but inbounds mid C2. Alvin trying to get back on track after back-to-back -back bogeys. Leaves this a bit high left. Needs to punch through this tree. And, man, it does. He's going to be inside circle, too. Pretty scary putt left. Yeah, good bit of space on the front side of this green, but not more than 12 or 15 feet on the back side right at the basket. Barella with the putter, stays high and left. So everybody's safe, everybody with a putting opportunity here. I think this may be the scariest one of the bunch right here. Austin Hannum gives it a good effort, gonna come up just a bit short. And AB connects on the step putt, downhill, circle two. Gatekeeper rewind action. Another clean release on that one. No spin at all. Drops it in just above the basket. Or no wobble at all. I guess it did spin. And Calvin makes good. Yeah, if your putt doesn't spin but wobbles a bunch, it's just it's going in their cattywampus. You don't want that. And Jones does make it three birdies on the card. Han, I'm going to tap in his par. Uh, about the best we've seen any card play hole 16 this weekend, I think. Definitely so. And it averaged pretty even. 34% birdie, 33 par, 33 bogey. Moves us into hole 17, 840 foot par four. You'd like to get to this area off of the tee ideally so you have a good good footing and good distance of about 350 360 into this pin if you land off a bit farther right there's a right-handed hyzer you can get into this basket as well with minimal wind a chance to absolutely unload kevin gonna play a steep flip up over the right side doesn't really even go over the road Come on. Come on back. and understable enough to stay in bounds. He's down in the flat. Uh, probably not more than 325 from the bucket. Yeah, big tee shot there. Lost a, lots of distance. Heimberg probably going for broke. This has got to go. Oh, and he's just going to come up short. That rode the OB line for quite a ways. But he's going to have to walk a little ways back on the fairway now. Barella also going right side hyzer. Again, not out over the road, but this looks fantastic as Anthony Barella has incredible distance. And he's got up to that flat part on the above that second hill. That's so far. Yeah, that means potentially putter or mid into the green, which kind of makes your angles easier to manage as it's flying uphill. Hand him to the backhand. And I kind of like the way this is drifting, drifting. It's not like Calvin's that was thrown straight at the OB. It's pulled over. And in a great spot now is Austin Hannum. Yeah, and him not using as many angles, just throwing a very straight disc and letting it glide. Executed nicely and going to go forehand into this green. And actually overpowers it. 
Don't see a whole lot of second shots go long. Certainly not the ones thrown forehand. Jones also th starting at the left side and flattens. Yeah, he's up there in C1. Wow, what an understable disc. I appreciate that personally. Yeah, I like watching flights like that. Looked like it was going to drift left the entire flight and just slowly kept going straighter and straighter. And AB with the putter turnover. Joins Hannum on the back side of the hill. Long with a putter second. Just rude, offensive. So Calvin, looks like he got a pretty good spot. Yeah, Spotter had a good angle, was right on top of it, but Vinny gonna come up short. And now this obstructed look for Bogey. Yeah, this will get him up and down for Bogey if he's able to get out. Then he does that well, but again, three bogeys in the last four holes after an incredible stretch of eagles and birdies in the middle of the round. And creeping in over the rim, Austin Hannum. That's a... I don't know that he... I, I think that fist pump tells me he didn't think he deserved it totally. Count it. <laughs> Count it for Kevin Jones also, who is going to switch up scores with Calvin. Be eight under par. Yeah, Kevin Jones now quietly, I think, into third. We, we spent a lot of time talking about Calvin, and here comes Kev Jones. Hole 18, 660 feet, par four, up the hill, roller, forehand, backhand. They all play into a landing zone. We're going to fly past this basket, and the entire fairway, left and right, has OB marked on both sides. A pretty difficult green to attack unless you're in the perfect position. Yeah, this basket really just seems to be tucked way off to the right. Although it, it's not once you get up the hill. It's just so hard to get to the top of the hill that from here where Kevin Jones landed at, so difficult to get around the corner. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested to see that Jones had thrown roller in some previous rounds, now chooses to go forehand. Hannum, this is high and popped up. Might need some branch help. Sneaks through those branches, able to get up there in bounds. Dif again, a difficult spot to attack the green from. May just play for par. AB, stable forehand, pinched on the right side, but is safe. Nathan, I don't want to harp on it too much, but these are the DGPT playoffs. Everything's worth extra points in the season. And uh, all of these guys having good enough seasons that they should be thinking about Pro Tour Championship points as they come down the stretch here, not just place in this tournament. Absolutely so. I'm sure that all of these, or if they have not, they should be looking to see if a stroke or one stroke is going to make a difference in the playoff points at this point. They need to go for the birdie or if they can just lay up for par and keep their position that they're at. Heimberg does attack the green on his second and stays safe on the right side in C2. This doesn't look like layup mode. And burning it right side. Kevin Jones going to have to take a drop pretty far back. It's bogey at best from there. This does look like layup mode from Austin Hannum. Just going to pitch up around the corner, and he's going to have another similar shot to the basket, but less blind, less scary. Yeah, I think I think Kevin, with the lead card, still with 17 and 18 to play at this point in real time, was probably hoping for a miracle of some sort. That Yeah, he's pushing to make some pressure. Here. Yeah, absolutely. So, I believe it was a smart choice for him to go for that. He's able to execute his next shot well. Should be up and down for the bogey to finish his round at seven under par. 
And Austin Hanna with the jump putt. This fades out left side, but stay safe. And he should be in pretty good position to close out par. Calvin with a long bid to finish on a birdie. We saw some theatrics from Calvin the other day on this hole. Today, not so much. Just left with a tap in. Yeah, great showing from Calvin Heimberg, as always on the weekend. Kevin Jones. Bit of a mishap there. Not one you want to see on the last hole. Yeah, maybe the focus there or there as he realized his tournament was uh, was about over. AB finishes his round three down, grabs a top ten finish, continuing a, a pretty stellar season. And Austin Hannum going to card a two under par to finish inside that top 15. Good finish for him this year. He's been a little bit farther back than he'd like to be. Good to see him up here showing off in the playoffs when it matters most. Yeah, on the tour ground, on the tour grind. Uh, but hey, great time to peak going right into Worlds. Well, there you guys have it. That was our final nine holes of the Discraft Great Lakes Open. Kevin Jones, Calvin Heimberg going to finish six down, seven down. And be inside that top ten. Yeah, uh, and congratulations to Simon Lazat grabbing yet another Elite Series victory. So much good golf we saw this weekend, four full rounds. We hope you'll go back and look at our catalog on Gatekeeper Media. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Yeah, great weekend. I really enjoyed calling it for you guys. We've got Worlds coming up next. Excited to be up at Smuggler's Notch. For Andrew Fish, I'm Nathan Queen. We'll see you guys out there.